we're back to the prison stories. My stories when I was incarcerated, I took a long break from this. I have a lot of supporters who started following the channel because of this. Uh, a while ago, I posted um, the Princess Mafia, the OK Hang Gang. If you're not aware of who this organization group is, this video is about the gay, the homosexual gay gang inside of the Florida prisons. Let's get it. <laughs> What's up, White Boy Radio, back with another one. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the uh, prison gang, Princess Mafia, and OK Hang Gang. Um, I did a community post a few months back. I was at a bar, and uh, it was me and my wife and a friend of ours get a couple of drinks. And there was a dude there, um, gay dude, and he comes over to the table. Of course, my wife calls him over there. You get to talking, and um, I did a post on this. You get to talking, and... Look, we're pretty real people, you know. I don't hide the fact that I've been incarcerated, but just like I don't hide the fact that I've been incarcerated, it's also easy for me to spot um, certain traits or things about people. And once the once the dude opened up that he was gay, uh, the next conversation is prison. Uh, we're talk actually talking about where he came from in Florida. Long story short, he was part of the... Uh, Princess Mafia, um, that's the name of the organization. Look, inside of prisons, um, Florida, I can speak for Florida, but it goes all around the states. It's um, interesting to have lived through that. And what I mean by that is uh, YouTube is a good tool for that because people watch movies and whatever have you, and the, con the misconception of the prison system is is out of this world. But, you know, doing prison content, doing crime reactions, true crime, look, these people in these crimes, they go to prison. And it's important to understand the aspect of prison. And most people in prison, especially well, I could speak for Florida. You have to you have to join a gang nowadays to survive it. You really do. And usually in prison, it can go, you know, for the average person, you got, you know, usually it goes by race. Um, it's just, doesn't matter where you're from. Uh, it's just a simple code of prison. It's just, the, it's how society is in prison. But with prison comes um, punks, sissies, uh, gay people. Okay. Um, and look, I want to break the misconception on this video. Um, I'm tell a couple stories. The uh, OK, hang, <laughs> the difference between the OK Hang Gang, like hang, you know, something hang out, OK Hang Gang. I, I don't know why they named it that. In the Princess Mafia, I, I don't know the difference in bylaws or the difference in uh, the organization rules. Uh, one is you have to get a gay. Okay, that's one. Um, that's one thing they look for to draft. But uh, they're not soft. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about people who are in prison for all types of crimes, uh, all types of crimes with a lot of time, with short time. Um, they're not soft. That's a, uh, uh, people think because these guys are gay and they, uh, do gay things that, that, they're, that they're soft. They're not, they're not soft at all. Um, I, I've witnessed this with my own eyes. Uh, it's kind of comical when things get heated and things go down and you have to watch, because they say funny things. They say, don't make me drop my purse and pick up my wallet. Um, you know, uh, you know, they say all types of stuff. All right. You know, the, while they're tying up their shoes, they say, okay, uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to put my, my bussy, my, my bussy with the B, my bussy, my butt, my mangina. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my bussy away and flap out the cock. And then they go up there and wreck dudes. These dudes are grown men. Okay. That have been in and out of jail a lot. Um, some of them used to be in gangs, uh, Bloods and Crips, and whatever, and, and got X'd out or been denounced, and they joined this. Uh, a lot of gang members mess with gay people inside the prison system, and and it's a big, it's a big thing because uh, you know 
Bloods and Crips. And I'm just saying those organizations because everybody knows them. Um, I'm just using them as an example. They they have members, and that's one of their oaths and bylaws is you cannot you, you no know, homosexual activity. It's the same for like Aryan gangs and whatnot. You know, but when people when people get caught, when when these guys get caught, you know, messing with boys, uh, the gang is going to X them out. They're, 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 man, it's a, it's an embarrassment on the on the whole organization. So they're going to make an example out of them. But what what you know in 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 that in that situation, it's one man versus his own gang, and it's all a numbers thing. So what does what you know the person's option at that point is to. Go to go to the guards and check in. Go to go to uh, protective custody, which doesn't matter because they're still going to get hit. They can still get touched, or um, you know, th- their best bet is to go to the police, check in, and and try to get away from that prison and get transferred, and you're still not safe. Or g- they need to go out, come on out, and be gay and join and join the princess mafia and stuff because they have numbers too. Um, but. It's uh, it, it it's comical to, to watch. Look, it's comical to watch gay guys in prison. It really is. Um, you know, I, I want a good story uh, about this is when I got off the bus. I remember second time I was in prison. I uh, got off the bus and I was in a reception center. Okay, from from jail, I awaited. Okay, uh, they they took a whole bunch of us in a bus and I went to the prison. You, you, you're meeting people. Uh, I'm sorry. This was from the reception center to the main prison. Okay. So you go from jail to a reception center and you do it like about a month there. They figure out where you're going to go, where they're going to house, what kind of job you're going to have, what your charges are. And then you sit at that reception center for, you know, within that month, then you go to your main institution and uh, that's what happened. So I'm coming from the reception center to the main institution. And there was a guy. There was a guy I, I was rode the bus with. He was a white dude. He was a young dude. He he seemed all right to me. I, I talked to him a little bit. And I'm at this main institution, and I, I don't know anybody yet. So you tend to kind of uh, talk to the people who you who you go to the main institution with. You take the uh, bus ride with, and that's who I talked to. And there was this guy, and uh, he was all right. So I would hit the, the yard would open, and look. Um, Prison's intimidating. You know, you're at your main institution. You don't really know anybody yet. It's very intimidating. You're walking around. You're 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 you're, you're depressed. You're down on yourself. You're 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 lonely. You're um. It's just uh, it's it's a it's a very hard thing to like, explain. But you um, you're in a, you're in a different world. Uh, here it is. Now the yard's open, and you're just looking for uh, you know simple conversation. So I ran across him, and he kept changing. He kept doing weird things. Um, I'd be talking to him, and uh. Like there's a big track in prison. So it's uh you have a soccer field, you have a baseball field, you have a rec area, people play chess, dominoes, cards. It's a big, big, enormous area. Um, and there's a big clay track that runs around it, a big walking. So if you want to walk, if you want to run, people are constantly walking in circles in prison. Um, you know, of course I got my workout in, but when that's done, I'm still outside. What's there to do? So you you'd walk, walk and talk. I'd find him and I'd burn a couple laps with him. And uh, a couple yards would go by, and, and this guy, he would walk with me uh, shorter and shorter. One time, I, I burned the, the, the track with him, and there was this black guy. He was like, hey, hey, I forget the guy's name that I, in this story. I really forget his name. We'll call him Billy. I don't know. I forget his name. But the black guy was like, hey, Billy, come on, wait, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, What's that about, bro? And he's like, oh, you know, he, he like shuffled it off. And he, and he, and he walked to, to the black guy. I didn't think nothing of, nothing of it. Next time, um, next time, same, uh, same circumstance. Uh, but it was a shorter amount of laps that we did. So I'm walking with him and I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, have you done this? Have you done that? Have you got a medical? Have you done that? You know, prison talk. Um, the black dude like aggressively approached us and got him. But this time the guy was looking at me all crazy. The black guy. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? Come to find out, uh, time as time went on, that guy I rode to that to that main institution with, man, he was uh they put down on him. He was uh 
he was with the gay dudes. And that was his like war daddy. That was his, I don't know what that was. I guess a boy, uh, a, 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 a domestic angry husband. So I had to stop all that because the dude was a big gorilla. Uh, I'm not going to, the last thing I want to do is fight this dude over some dude that went gay. I, I'm not gay. So what are we doing here? So I cut all ties with that dude. Um, and then I was meeting people, meeting my bros that I hung out with and whatnot. But it was one, it was very strange to watch this guy who rode the, the, who was at the reception and he was normal there to my knowledge. I rode small talk and just talking and he, he got put down and that's what happens too. people get put down in prison. They become victims. They become, uh, targets and they're hiding hole is suspect. Uh, not Matt, but, um, you know, I'm not gonna go. Um, he wasn't that special to me. He was just somebody I knew. Go ahead. Take his butthole. We don't have to fight about it. I don't want it. But, um, you know, uh, other times with this, I had a good friend, um, Greg, this guy, uh, was a stand up, was a stand up dude, man. Um, I respected him. We, we became friends. But there was an incident in the dorm where uh, he had gambled. And uh, look, when, when you get to prison, they say, hey, you stay away from the three G's. Gays, gambling, and gangs. And look, he, uh, they, you, there's actually a video about that that you watch that the correction officers um, play for you. So uh, look, he gambled. He gambled with this gay dude. They had words and they, they, they started the fight or, well, they, they were talking crazy and the whole dorm knows they're, they're watching. And that's when I heard that saying the first time, don't make me drop my purse and pick up my wallet. And my, my buddy Greg was fighting this black dude. They're about the same size, about the same weight. And they hit the wall and my buddy was getting the best of them. But, um, I mean, they were connecting hit for hit, uh, hit for hit. They both had busted noses and then they were both bleeding that, you know, they were both, they were both fighting good. It was about even. And my buddy Greg stopped fighting and he started to run away I, I, in, in mid fight. I, at this point I thought, and this was a black guy he was fighting, uh, that, that was gay, it, but he stopped fighting this guy and he wasn't getting his ass kicked. I mean, it was about even he started, he stopped fighting the guy and he ran away. And I couldn't figure it out. At this point, I thought the black guy pulled out a knife or something. So it was getting concerning. But he said it because it wasn't just me. A, a couple of us that were okay with Greg were like, hey, bro, what are you doing? He's like, man, 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 he's bleeding. He's bleeding. And I'm like, we're like, uh, we're all confused. He was running away because he didn't want to mix blood with the guy because he was a, he was a, the guy he was fighting was a known um, gay dude. Uh, and his fear in, in mid in fighting was he was going to get a disease like, like AIDS or something I, to this day. I don't know if the guy had it or not, but this is just what went through his head. And, uh, the gay dude didn't stop fighting. He was chasing him around now. Now he was the aggressor and, uh, my, my buddy just wigged out. He ended up getting his ass kicked a little bit. Um, but it, it goes to show you that, that they're, 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 they're just not soft. It's a big misconception. Um, it's, uh, it's in this gang here. Um, I was going to interview the guy that in, in, in this thumbnail, uh, I was going to interview him, but, uh, look, just like I can see it and, and, and it came out in conversation at the bar. Sometimes guys getting out, they always have the best intentions. Um, look, I wish the guy, I, I don't know him that well. I wish him, uh, you know, all the, all, all success in life, especially he's out of prison now, but, uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, he was in town and he was, he was just passing through and one of those things. But, um, look, so I, I just figured out, I go ahead and speak out because I have enough experience with this subject, but, um, they're, they, they're, it's an organization that, um, it's a little different than the other gangs though. They're really not that violent. Um, they, they can be, they can be when it's needed but they don't start trouble and stuff like that. They all just bone each other and um, uh, stuff like that. It's uh, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's a community. It's a community. Look, I'm, I'm anti gang to the fullest people. Um, just, just, just so everybody knows, but this is prison life and it's a different uh, thing, but I'm anti gay gang because of what I have seen in the prison. And I don't like how gangs use people. And that's exactly what happens here. Um, and that's, it's like a source of offer. It's, it's like a source of protection for the guys that are weak, 
okay, because they come in prison just like the guy that that joined when I was walking around with, we called him Billy. You know, he ended up being part of either Princess Mafia, OK Hang Gang, w- whatever it was at, at that, you know, he, he ended up being a part of that. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, there's a lot of guys that end up going down that road when they go to prison. Uh, and I've said this before in, in, in previous videos. Uh, some of these guys do out of fear. Um, some of these guys have wives and kids at home. And I had a big problem with that because diseases are in prison and diseases are on the street. And there was, there was even uh, an incident in visitation. I've also told this story before where there was a guy who was doing this exact thing. He was lying to his wife. He was, he was getting, he had a boyfriend inside there and she was faithfully coming to see him all the time. And, uh, and there was, there was a dude one time in visitation, she was sitting there with him and the guy told him, told her, excuse me, what was going on. And she was like, what the hell? The guy and the the guy after the visitation, the guy went back to the dorm and man, they, they tore that dorm up. Here it is. This dude told and I had a much respect for the guy that did it. Uh, and he beat the crap out of the cheating guy. So the guy had a boyfriend in there. This woman was going to see him faithfully, sending him money. And then and, and he would take the money and support this guy inside. It was just a scumbag situation. And he had kids. But I had utmost respect for the person who said it to his wife because what if he gets out and she doesn't know? And now she's got a disease. And he, he could probably be sick enough to turn it on her because now he could say, well, I was locked up. Why do we have, who knows? But um, yeah, they tore it up, man. And um, it's, 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 a, it's a weird organization. Um, it does happen. They're not soft though, but they're not soft. Um, look, as far as uh, my experience with anybody messing with me like that or anything like that, so an instance with this would be, um, I remember my first time in prison, I was on the yard and stuff, and uh, I had never gotten um, approached like that, uh, hit on, nothing like that before, uh, but one time I did, and I handled it wrong. Um, it, I had to be, people that I was all right with in there had to kind of school me and guide me how to, how to go about this. But what had happened was I was uh, in the weight cage um, and get done with my workout and hang out with my bros. And they call the yard, the bell goes off and we were walking back to the dorm and there was a Spanish dude who approached me and he walked by, he said, um, he called me thick. And, uh, I was like, what the hell? And I, it's almost like I was waiting for this moment. So I really said some derogatory statements to him. Um, I tried to be as disrespect this, this, disrespectful as possible and and derogatory as possible on purpose um and it kind of backfired because the dude had a lot of time uh the dude had a boyfriend um and we go back into the dorm and sure enough uh another uh one of their little gang members gossiped about the things that I said, and it it's like a big gossip festival. YouTube reminds me of prison. The way people <laughs> and, and all this is the same thing, uh, but the, the only difference is here it's for clout and uh, cult members and minions versus uh, violence, stabbings, and what have you. But it's the same concept. Uh, so the go- the gossip's going around, and the boyfriend hears what I said, and now I have one two, and then the gang wanting to have an issue with me, the next yard. So I'm like really skull banging myself because I purposely said what I said. I was like, like I said, I was almost waiting for this to happen um, because I didn't want it to happen. And I wanted to make an example of it, but this is, this is the thing in Florida prison system. Uh, it's not like I could get the one-on-one with this guy. Because I was disrespected about what he said. It's now me versus them, not one-on-one. So now 
I have to incorporate other people to help me. And, and I did, I went and said, Hey man, this and that. And everybody that I went and approached to, I had, I had done some time with, and they knew my heart and stuff and they were willing to back me up, but, but they're all like, Hey man, you handled it wrong. Just say, Hey man, you don't get down like that and keep it moving. Just say, you don't get down like that. And they have to respect it after that, then, then, then there's be about your issue. But now I'm facing the yard to open and I, and I got to find a whole bunch of gay dudes. And, um, and that's just what happened. The, 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 the yard rang and, uh, went out there with my Nikes on and, uh, they approached me and I had a couple, I had a couple really good friends, uh, really good friends and they had my back, but we, we just kind of politic and talked it out. And, uh, you know, that's when I had learned, Hey man, I don't get down like that, but lesson learned, lesson learned. And I, and I, and I, and I took that lesson and approached it to, to people that would come in afterwards and this would happen to, but look, uh, princess mafia, they're nothing to play with. They're not like, like, like again, they're not like a fear gang. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just another useless gang to me. Uh, it's just a little, it's like a little click that gay guys run inside the prison. I will say this about them. I'll say this about them. W with the gay guys inside of prison, they, they, they have it to an advantage of them here in Florida because they entertain the, the correction officers. Look, I just, I said at the beginning of this video, it's comical to watch the gay guys, what they say, especially the flamboyant ones inside of prison. It's comical to see when they get the medium shorts and they have the shirt tied in a knot and they try to portray themselves like a woman. It, it, it's comical. Okay. It's very comical. You, anyone saying that it's not funny is lying to you. But just as I could tell you that as an inmate at the time, the correction officers get a kick out of it, especially the women ones, they get a kick out of it. So they want them, they would prefer to have the flamboyant gay people working for them rather than anybody else. Um, they, they get to laugh the whole shift. So they always get landed the good jobs. Um, so they, they, they really do. They're in the kitchen for multiple reasons. Uh, main one, they get the bang in the freezer. Yeah. Um, and all that stuff, but you know, they get all the good jobs. I, I will say, those guys land the good jobs and all that type of stuff, but it's just another gang, man. It's just another gang. I don't do gangs over here. Totally against it. I think it's stupid. You get used. Um, but unfortunately, man, when you have, if you have family in prison, you have friends in prison. You know, I don't know if they. It, you don't have to say it in the comments, but if you know somebody who's in jail, I don't. I'm not gonna say jail. If you know somebody who's been to prison, you know, unfortunately, man, um, they they may have to, to do something that you don't agree with. And I'm not saying that they have to join the princess mafia. I hope to God they don't. Um, now look, look if, if they're gay on the street and that's what they do, then 90% of the time they're probably gonna do that. But you know, even if, uh, look, a lot of guys have to join organizations when they go to prison. Uh, look, I didn't want to, I didn't want to. Okay. Um, I really didn't want to it, but again, there were situations where God was with me. I, I never fully joined any gang. I almost did. Um, but I, I was smart enough to see through the bullshit and get out of it uh, before too late. Um, but, you know, I, I've been in a lot of fights in prison, okay? And it could have went a lot different than me. You know, I, I got lucky enough. It, you know, when you have a problem with somebody in prison uh, as being on your own, you have to take in good faith that it's just going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And you have to be very smart because there were so many times I had to go talk to a head of an organization just to get a one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes they say, hey, don't hurt him, Matt. How do you do that? This guy disrespected me. I'm going to fight him. How do I not hurt him? If I go, if I hurt them too bad, they're going to all jump on me. They, they, I have, I've had gotten green lights a couple times. Look, I, to be honest, man, there's somebody always in the chats. My, my buddy JD, he was in prison with me. Uh, he's successful. He's doing his life. You know, you have no money. You, you have no idea how many times I've talked to him and said, Hey man, I don't know how he didn't get stabbed. It's uh it's a rough road for people to have to go through. Look, when I was in prison, it was my fault. I'm not justifying it. I don't condone it. 
but I know how reality works. And some of you do have loved ones inside of prison. Hopefully they're not part of the Princess Mafia. I don't know. But, um, you know, I wanted to get this one out here to the internet. You know, the other day I was talking to a, a subscriber of mine on the phone. And they thought that I was uh, homophobic. I don't know where it came from. I'm not going to say the subscriber. Um, that's not the deal at all, okay? Let me clarify it. I'm not a homophobic person. Look, to myself, I'm not gay, okay? If you are gay, you have somebody in your family that's gay, I don't have a problem with that, okay? For me, experiencing some of the things that I'm saying in this video, especially back to that visitation, I've seen it so much where guys do women dirty inside of prison, very dirty. Mess around with punks and stuff and come back out here and give whatever they have to the women. I have a problem with guys doing that. I have a guy, problem with guy. Look, if somebody was in prison and they're flamboyant or gay, I, I would not have a problem with that. Okay, I probably wouldn't talk to him. He could do his thing. I do. I do my thing. But I don't like have a hate for him or anything like that. The, the problem I would have was guys who were not upfront about it. And when it's chicken night and everybody's going to the chow hall, they're staying back and getting blown. But they have a gorgeous woman on the street, a faithful woman on the street taking care of him. And they have kids and whatnot. That's disgusting because it's not just about the, the guy and the wife. It's about the community and, and the disease spreading. Look, man, it's real, people. It's real. Um, it's real. And, and you could replace that whole thing with tattooing and hepatitis and all types of I, I can sit here and go down this wormhole for some time. Um, but, you know, nobody talks about this type of stuff. But look, I don't know if I brought any clarity to it throughout these stories. Um, I do know a lot of my subscribers have friends, family, incarcerated. Hopefully this brought something to it. Until the next one, it's White Boy Radio. Check out the socials. We're everywhere. And uh, until the next one.